In this episode of the SPS Podcast, we're going to talk about leadership. There are four key pillars to my leadership theory, the leadership theory that helped me be a successful leader for over 15 years in retail sales and corporate environments. And I want to talk about those four pillars today and how they relate to improving your self-performance. Let the credits roll. Welcome to the SPS Podcast, the Self-Performance Strategies Podcast. Unlocking the secrets of self-performance so you can improve mentally, emotionally, and physically. The goal of this podcast is to help you create even more freedom of time, money, and purpose in your life. And the SPS Podcast is brought to you by the 30-Day Pro Accelerator Program. If you wanna find out more about that, check the show notes and click the link and head on over to stephentimony.com. Let's get in to the episode. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are in episode 26 of the SPS podcast. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about a subject I don't talk about that much on my social timelines on LinkedIn or Twitter, but it is one of my areas of expertise. It is one of my key tenets of my life. It is one of my unique abilities. Yes, we all have many unique abilities, but we're talking about leadership in this one. And in this episode, I want to talk about the leadership system that I designed and I call Sims. And I designed it for my own life. I designed it for how I show up as a leader. And I want to talk about how you should show up as a leader. And I want to explain why all leaders should show up like this, not only for their own self-performance, but for the performance of their teams. Now, in this episode, I will be dropping a lot of quotes. So not just one quote to frame the episode, but I have picked a quote out (laughs) to frame the episode, but there will be more, there will be more. But the first quote that I want to share with you is from Latsu who we all know wrote the fantastic book, The War of Art, or The Art of War, sorry, The War of Art, Stephen Pressfield, I mean, The Art of War by Latsu. And he said, a leader is best when people barely know he exists. When his work is done, his aim fulfilled, they will say, we did it ourselves. This is one of my favorite leadership quotes because a leader should be quiet in the background. A leader should be the person who is not seen or heard but is felt and things get done and not in a fearful way not in a we've got to do it because there's an evil eye watching watching us it's just done because that's the culture and the environment that that leader has created for work to be done but the question i've got to ask you is do you want to improve your leadership skills And obviously, I'm hearing many yeses. So I want to take you through my four-step process that I created after working in leadership roles for 15 plus years. You can use it in any work or project situation to help you become a better leader in your business and a better leader in your life. The process I'm about to set out can also create benefits for you outside of work. You can use it to lead yourself to better results and I will discuss that at the end of the podcast so listen to that part and I'll do a quick summary of how you would use it in your own life but what is what is this leadership process well I call it sims s-i-m-s and yes I I know that does sound like a pc game from the 90s and the 2000s but that's that's the point (laughs) it's a it's a funny acronym for you and it's easy to remember because it's named after the PC game Sims. But what does Sims stand for? It stands for simplify, inspire, move and support. And I will discuss each of those categories in a little bit more depth as we go through. But before we dive into these, I want to share another quote with you. Yes, I told you this episode was going to be quote heavy. And this quote exemplifies, in my opinion, what leadership is. And it comes from John Quincy Adams. And he said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, learn more, do more and become more, you are a leader. Now, that's another fantastic quote because that does not portray leadership as a leader giving directions or yelling at people. It's about taking action in your own life. It's your actions and what you do that make you a leader. I think the other quote that springs to mind is from Epictetus. Here it says, don't explain your philosophy, embody it. And, And that's exactly what this idea of Sims is based around. It's like 
showing up and actually doing the right thing in leadership positions or in your life. Now, let's roll in and talk about the first component of Sims, and that is simplify. And again, I'm going to drop another quote here. I'm going to drop a quote for each of these sections. And the first one comes from Albert Einstein. And he said, if you can't explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. Yes, huge, huge, huge. I've worked in so many leadership positions and in so many different environments that this is a leader's number one key responsibility and that's to simplify things. Leaders in the corporate settings and the entrepreneurial world need to learn this at a deeper level. It's such a stumbling block for so many people. You've got to simplify the directions you give to your people. Above, below, or around you, you've got to simplify the directions you give to yourself. Stop overcomplicating life. Stop overcomplicating your habits. Stop overcomplicating your days. There are only ever really three to five vital activities that are moving your business or your life forward. If you've got more than three or five big goals in your life, you're overcomplicating things. You're making things too complex. Stop it. If you use the 80-20 philosophy, you will find that 20% of your activities give you 80% of your results. Pretty common knowledge. The goal is then to simplify what you focus on so you can drop or reduce effort in the rest of the areas. And that's why you've got to focus on the key three to five things that actually move your life and your business forward. Now, I always get people push back when I say this, whether it's on Twitter, whether it's on LinkedIn, whether it's in real life, people are always, no, no, I've got so many things to do. I've got too much on. There's no way. It's it's not that simple. Yes, it is. When you boil it down, most of the activities that you, your team, or whatever you're thinking about, are not affecting the results, the revenue, or the growth of your business, or the results of the revenue, the growth of your life. Do you ever finish a day or a week and can't remember what you did? Yeah, the reason for that is you spent your week doing low value, busy work. You spent your day stuck in the weeds doing nothing. Shallow work that is easily forgettable and has no impact. But when you do key work on impactful work, on the high dollar and high value activities in your life, mentally, emotionally, and physically, whether it's with your business or whether it's with your fitness or whatever whatever that is for you, you remember that because it makes you feel good. You have a clear memory of the things that you did because you're doing impactful stuff that moves you towards your big goals. You should focus on the key drivers and then you should simplify, simplify, simplify so that everyone you included, understands what they need to do, whether that's in a business or whether that's in your life. And we'll, we'll touch on that life part at the end of the podcast again when I break down how you can use the, the Sims idea, these four letters in your own life. But let's move on to the second category. And the second category is inspire. And we've got another quote here. And we've got a quote from Simon Sinek, who you probably know is a managerial expert and has written a number of books in this area. But he said, there are only two ways to influence human behavior. You can manipulate it or you can inspire it. Now, his lessons can apply to both the corporate and entrepreneurial environments from all his books. He's very much all about leadership management, about getting the most out of your people, getting the most out of yourself. And this quote illuminates a couple of things you you don't manipulate or force people to do something and you don't manage people and processes you inspire people to work you inspire people to use processes you inspire people to do the right thing leaders motivate people by giving them a vision and taking them on a journey and making it simple going back to step one making it simple for them to take action they help their people grow They help their people transform and then even transcend the role they hold. I don't know how many organizations I've been in that they don't want people to move from that bum in that seat and they even restrict people from moving because the you know the the capacity of the organization, you know, needs of the business. I I absolutely hate that term. That term is pointless. Needs of the business can go F itself if somebody's life development is more important. Somebody's life development always more important than needs for the business. If most of your people are not moving on to something bigger and better in their lives professionally or personally after you've been their leader and after they've worked in your organization or they've come through your team, can you even call yourself their leader? No, I don't think you can. Your people should be getting better 
in all areas of their lives when you're in charge of them. When looking after a team or a process, many managers focus way, way, way too narrowly on the data and forget about the people. Needs of the business, needs of the business. Get get out of here. Just pack your bag and get out of here. If you're a manager or a leader who's ever said that and restricted somebody being promoted, restricted somebody getting an opportunity, restricted somebody having a career development because you've said needs of the business and that person can't do that, you are wrong. And you need to go and have a long, hard look at yourself in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's me being just blunt and, 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 and forceful here. But once you've simplified your message, you want to inspire people by creating a vision for them that motivates them. Keep things simple, give them a why, give them something that motivates them, and then let them go and do their work. You want to motivate them to not only do the work, uh, but to get better and eventually leave their role for something more challenging, more lucrative, or for them to follow a passionate pursuit could even be to replace you if you're a leader within a corporate environment if you're an entrepreneur and you want to detach yourself from the day-to-day -day running of the business you know when you're thinking well who am I going to hire in you shouldn't be thinking about that you should be thinking who can I upskill to replace me and then detach yourself and inspiring people and making things simple is how you're going to do that so let's move on to the next one which is move M for move and it basically means move out of the way but before we jump into it let me bring in a quote from George S. Patton here don't tell people how to do things tell them what to do and let them surprise you with their results another fantastic idea another key idea for any leaders out there give your team instructions and let them do the work oh my god I can't even count how many managers and I don't use the word leader here. I use the word managers here very thoughtfully because a leader doesn't do this. I can't tell you how many managers I've worked under or have seen give directions and then constantly follow up and remain hyper involved in the process, effectively micromanaging. Micromanaging is the curse of modern day leadership. And I can tell you why it's the curse of modern day leadership. Managers get involved because they think they can do it better or because an employee doesn't have the skills, knowledge or ability to do it the way they want it done. So they do it themselves. Or on the opposite spectrum, you have the overloading manager. They give you a project or task to work on and then something else comes down the pipeline. They overreact. They don't know how to simplify. And they, so they pile it onto you instead of evaluating what needs to be done, prioritizing what needs to be done. They dump and run. They constantly create bottlenecks with poor workflow. And that's another curse of modern day leadership. When an employee is overloaded, they are much less likely to complete any project or any work or anything in a, in a, in a manner necessary. Same for you. If you're overloaded, if you're confused, if you don't know your directions, if things aren't simple, if you aren't inspired to do work, you're not going to do anything. You're just going to procrastinate and do nothing. If you're working in a corporate environment or not, you're running a team as an entrepreneur right now, sick days are going to go up. Extended lunches are going to happen. People are going to start coming in late. Negative culture is going to grow. It's going to grow like a disease. People will start leaving for greener pastures. You know, when you give your team activities to do, you've got to move out of the way. You've got to let them do it. You've got to let them do it. And I'll come back to the point that I said earlier that I was going to explain why this is a curse of modern day management in corporate and entrepreneurial situations. This is really hard and it's especially hard for entrepreneurs and leaders who used to be subject matter experts. I call it the subject matter experts curse or the subject matter experts trap because you used to be excellent at being an engineer, excellent at being a copywriter, excellent at managing a team, at whatever it is, whatever you are in your in, in, in your in your life, and you're now leading a team of people. You at one point, as a sales team, selling cars, selling clothes, selling stuff to B two B, B two C, you were excellent at it, and now you have a team of people who are not as good as you. So you micromanage them because you used to be the subject matter expert, but. Being good at the job that, that you're now managing doesn't make you a good leader. In fact, it probably makes you a, a, a worse leader than somebody who doesn't actually know how to do the job because a person who doesn't know how to do the job, do you know what they focus on? If they have no idea how to get results in that lower position, they focus on being a people manager. They focus on creating an environment 
for people to actually get the work done because that leader doesn't know doesn't know how to get those results because they don't know that job so they focus on helping their teams get the results so they look good but unfortunately with subject matter experts they see people not doing the job at a high enough level so they get stuck in there they go back in there and they start working with the people micromanaging getting in the way oh my god i see it all the time Cor- corporate offices across the world have probably i i'm gonna roll throw out a completely made up percentage stat here but i'm gonna hazard a guess 60 70 80 percent of managers in most positions are hired into those positions because they used to be good at the job and they're not good at managing people they're not good at leadership because they've never take the never taken the time to learn leadership in the same detail that they learned their previous job and leadership is probably a more difficult job <laughs> Managing people, managing people's emotions, managing your emotions is probably a more difficult job than the job that you used to be very, very good at. That's why I say it's especially hard for entrepreneurs and leaders who used to be subject matter experts. But you've got to give people the room. If they fail, they will learn. You've got to give people the room to grow. You've got to give people the opportunity. That's a massive, massive part of M. That's why M's in there is move out of the way. Because I've, I've had this conversation before with people. And they're like, what M? Move out of the way? What do you mean move out of the way? Well, it means exactly that. The biggest trap you can do as a leader, the biggest trap you're even doing mentally in your own life is you're getting in your own way. So that's my advice in the 26th episode of the SPS podcast when it comes to this part of leadership. If you do the work, you will continue always to have to do the work. So you just got to get out of the way and let your team do the work. You become the constraint for the growth of your team, for your business. If you're an entrepreneur listening to this and you have a small business and you have a bunch of people working for you and you're feeling a bit of a a, a chill down your spine because you've realized, oh my God, I'm getting involved with my people too much. Yeah, the reason why your business isn't growing is because you're way too involved in the day-to-day process. So move out of the way, move out of the way. And with that, I'll move to the fourth part of the Sims process, and that's S. It's the second S, but this one isn't simplify, it's support. And to roll into this one, we're going to speak to, or we're not going to speak to, Jim Rowan is going to speak to us with this fantastic quote. A good objective of leadership is to help those who are doing poorly do well, and to help those who are doing well do even better. Love this quote from Jim Rowan. Support your team. Support your partners when they need you to. Don't over-support them. Don't under-support them. Often leaders, managers, business owners, entrepreneurs, we all get bogged down focusing on underperformance and can even ignore high performers. The high performers then can then feel neglected and used and dumped on because we're always pushing work onto them and they're like, oh my God, I'm, I'm getting performance punishment. And then the underperformers feel micromanaged and under pressure and under, under the eye of Sauron or Sauron from Lord of the Rings, you know, the evil eyes on them and they feel micromanaged. And the funny thing is, is like what I talk about this with other managers and leaders, you know, they talk to each other on their lunch breaks. The, the, these colleagues of each other, the, the people who work for you, the people in your teams, the people who work for your entrepreneurial business, they talk to each other. They're like, yeah, he hasn't spoke to me in weeks. That's your high performer. And then your underperformer is like, yeah, he's always up in my grill, constantly, you know, getting in my way. And then they're like, yeah, he's not a great leader. They talk to each other. So you've got to make sure that everybody is getting the right attention because acting like that unbalances your team. So you've got to support people with the, in, in the right way, in the right way, support people. And if you, even, even if you do everything else right, and this is, kind of going off a little bit here, but even if you do everything else right, you simplify and you aspire, you inspire people, you move out of the way, you can still fail because, you know, support, supporting your staff mentally and emotionally when needed is, is one of the most important things you can do. Your teams, being there for them in the right way is how they'll remember you. They'll not really remember the inspiring speech that you give on a wet, cold Tuesday morning in October. They're not going to remember <laughs> that you simplified things because that's that they'll just think that's how things are meant to be done but they will remember how you made them feel when the shit hit the fan when they were struggling with something they will remember those feelings at the end of each day when they go home they will remember how you made them feel it is also why if you're doing it right they will work longer for you and stand beside you in pressure moments if you treat them right they will treat you right and if you're looking for a little bit more extra support and well, how do you do this? 
You've probably heard of this concept, but if you want to dive deep, you can go find it online. Situational leadership is one of the best models. It's got four quadrants in it, but it's got one of the best models I've ever come across in my 15 years of, of um, leading people. I, I learned it in university many years ago. It, it was designed in the 60s or the 70s by Ken Blanchard, I think, uh, leadership specialist, and it's been used constantly still all the way through. You know, Taking the time to understand situational leadership and placing each of your teams into this model will really help you. It will really help you. And I'm not going to get too deep into situational leadership. Go, 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 go figure it out yourself. I'll just touch right now if you're thinking, well, how do you actually implement this idea? Situational leadership is is the best thing to do. The other thing I'll say about this, uh, this idea about uh, being supportive. Being supportive is much more than having an open door policy. I, I hate these corporate buzzwords, you know. Needs of the business. Open door policy. Oh my God, just they're, they're, they're so dumb. They're so dumb. Uh, sitting behind your desk with two large monitors, no chair in front of you for people to sit down on, with no direct eye line. Uh, you know, if your door might be open, but your, your staff can't see you. When they come in, they're, they're intimidated because they're like trying to look past these big monitors and you're stuck behind things. That's, that's not an open door policy. That's not an open door, leave me alone policy. You know, make it easy for people to speak to you. Uh, when they need help, but protect your time at, at, at the same time. You've got to protect your time. But that might mean having your door closed for the first hour of the morning, but letting your team know that's your policy. Hey, the first hour of the morning, I'm really busy. I have my door closed. The rest of the day, it's open. And then have a nice, spacious, open office and don't have your monitors in, in the way. Or if you do, as soon as somebody comes in to speak to you, you move out of the way. You make it nice and comfortable for them. And also, I have had, I don't know, four or five managers do this. When I sit down to speak to them, Again, I'm using the word manager here. On their phones or on their computer, typing away, instant messaging, writing emails when I'm asking them questions and I'm asking them to help me in a detailed way. And I can remember every single one of those managers still because that is terrible, terrible, terrible leadership. If somebody's in your office talking to you, you are 100% talking to them back, eye contact. Two things happen here. You'll build a lot more trust and the conversation will be three times quicker. So that's a key reminder for you as well. It is a delicate balance between protecting your time and being there for your team. But if you have the right systems in place, if you have a nice welcoming office, if you have direct eye contact and when someone's in your office, you 100% commit to talking to them, you will be able to balance yourself quite well. You will be able to support your teams. So that was the four pillars of Sims. And now we're gonna flip this and get a little bit deeper into a conversation about how you can use these four pillars of simplify, inspire, move, and support in your own life. But before we do that, let's talk about a quick quote to set us up for this last part of the 26th episode of the SPS podcast. And that is a quote from Sir Edmund Hillary. And he said, it's not the mountain we conquer, but our cells. Very true. We don't go hiking because we want to defeat the mountain. We go hiking and we do extreme stuff. We do hard stuff because we want to conquer ourselves, conquer our mindset, conquer the demons inside us. <laughs> so how do we use Sims in our own life? Well, let's look at Simplify. Quite simply, we simplify things. Simplify your life as much as you can. Don't take on too much. Don't take on too little, but don't take on too much. Focus on three to five key activities, three to five big goals in your life, three to five big habits that you can work on and go after them. Be very tunnel visioned, but allow a little bit of movement. But we can't have 25 big goals in life. We can't have 10 big goals in life. In life, if we want to achieve big things, We've got to have that vision, that clear vision and that clear why. It's got to be very simple and very easy for us to understand why we're doing it, what we're doing it, where we're going. And that's how we can simplify our lives. Now, the second one, inspire. How do we inspire ourselves? Well, quite simply, you inspire yourself by reading good books, listening to good podcasts like this one, yeah, <laughs> and avoiding consuming too much junk media, the negative news, shitty movies, shitty TV shows, you know, TikTok, Instagram, YouTube reels, you know, the, the short form content is just, it's killing your brain. It, it's not good. It's not inspiring you. It's motivational junk. If you're watching the more healthy stuff, the majority of stuff on TikTok and Instagram is trash. Same on Twitter. 
Same on LinkedIn. There's a lot of there's a lot of trash out there. So you want to curate your your feeds. You want to curate your life. So you're reading those good books. You're following those top content creators. You're following people uh, who deliver high quality information to you on a daily basis and keep you positive, keep you focused, keep you inspired. And th- and that's how you inspire yourself by having a, a world around you where you're constantly hearing big ideas and you're constantly hearing your good things that are helping you move forward in your life. Now, the third category is move. How do you move out of your own way? Well, constraint theory pretty much says you're often the block to your own success. We are. Always have been, always will be. We, we are we are the blockage. Whatever level we're at, we're blocking ourselves from getting to the next level. And it's this cycle that we keep repeating over and over and over again. You know, we, we, we get better, we, we grow, and then we realize there's a deeper level to us we have to unlock so we can keep growing. You will talk yourself out of many ideas before starting uh, to work on them. The advice here is just to do it. At, at every new level that you reach, the, you just got to keep going and going harder and going deeper. You get to a certain fitness, there'll be a next level. You get to you get the certain mindset, there'll be a next level. You have a good keep going to you get to a certain level. Emotionally, there's going to be a, a next level you go to. And, and each big step, there's always that resistance. There's always that that struggle but we just got to move out of our way so we got to just move out of our way and and go after it and that's how you can use this third category of sims in your own life and finally support how do you use support in your life from this leadership framework sims well support yourself by looking after yourself mentally emotionally and physically eat well sleep well exercise reduce negative self-talk reduce negative environments reduce being around negative people make sure you're supporting yourself in the best way possible if you're not supporting yourself for excellence you're not going to achieve excellence so that's how you use sims in your own life it is a leadership framework that i designed a number of years ago for myself that has helped me excel and you go on linkedin you can see on my (laughs) on my linkedin i've been promoted i don't know in the last 10 years, about 12 or 13 times, I was getting promoted like less than less than a year, pretty much uh, on average when I was working in my last two roles. Uh, one was a corporate uh, role and the one before that was a uh, commission sales environment role. I just think people just kept promoting me pretty quickly because uh, that's that's why I was I was good at what I did. Uh, so I, I, I had this framework in the back of my mind. It was something that I always looked at when I started with new teams, started on new projects. I would often write Sims on the board or, or write Sims in my journal and just think about how can I simplify things? How can I inspire people? How can I find the why? How can I get really clear on what we're doing here? How can I move out of the way? What can we move out of the way process-wise? What can we move out of the way to help our teams actually achieve our goals? What, what can we move, not just myself as a person, but what can we move physically from the environment? What can we do? And then support. What support can we give people? What's the best way for people to get the work done? There's so many different levels to the Sims. You could you could find so many subcategories under each of these four categories. Uh, you could just keep going and going and going. How you could simplify things. How you can inspire people. How you can move out of the way. And and how you can support people. So I hope you find Sims useful. Obviously, I'll put a breakdown of what I've talked about here uh, in the show notes below. So if you do want to explore Sims a bit more, go ahead. Also, if you want to have a phone call with me and, and talk about this, this is the, the cornerstone to my coaching package, to my 30-day pro accelerator, which also can turn into a, a, a quarter package or a six-month package working with me. You can go ahead and, and check that out in the show notes if you want to jump on a call, have a conversation and and see how I can help you in your life to improve the performance of your business, improve your performance personally. Always open to having those conversations, but let's end this podcast. Let's wrap up. Thank you very much for joining me for the 26th episode of the SPS podcast. It has been a pleasure and hopefully we will talk to each other in the next one. Make it a good one.